So welcome back. This is part two this week. Now, uh, looking at unrelated diversification strategies is going to require careful consideration of the acquisition candidates that are out there. And they usually involve putting uh, at risk some of your valuable resources and capital uh, that you have uh, been using. So uh, for a strategy of unrelated diversification, I mentioned GE, uh, to produce a company-wide financial result above and beyond, you know, what anybody would expect or would hope to generate otherwise. The executives really have to do three things as listed on the slide. You should diversify into industries where the business can produce consistently good earnings. That's important. Uh, you want to negotiate favorable acquisition uh, prices and do a great job of corporate partnering via high-level management oversight, sharing resources, etc. There are a number of pitfalls related to diversification. Uh, there are demanding managerial requirements as listed on this slide. You're welcome to pause and review it. I recommend it. And no matter what, unrelated diversification strategies have two important negatives that kind of undercut or under uh, create an undertow for you uh, or undercut the pluses, right? It can be very demanding, as I just mentioned, for managerial requirements. And there's a limited competitive advantage potential, right? So you got to say, why are we doing it? Sometimes it is the right thing to do. Um, so companies sometimes pursue unrelated diversification for reasons that are entirely misguided, right? Uh, because unrelated diversification strategies at their best have only a limited potential in the end for creating the long-term benefits, economic benefits that you're looking for. And so here's just another way it can be uh, misguided along the way. Now, a combination related Unrela there's a combination related, unrelated diversification strategy, right? Related, unrelated. You can have that kind of a strategy. This has particular appeal for companies that have a mix of assets and a, they cover a wide spectrum of uh, resources and capabilities to draw from. So there can be a lot of room to customize their diversification strategy and to incorporate elements of both the related un and unrelated diversification that can make for a competitive uh, profile and enhance your strategic vision. So this combination has appeal for companies with a mix of assets and again that broad spectrum of resources. Strategic analysis of these diversified companies builds on concepts and methods that, are, that were used originally for just the single business company that we've talked about for weeks. Uh, and so the procedure for evaluating the pluses and minuses, the pros and cons of a diversified company strategy, and then deciding what actions to take to improve the company's performance involves these six steps to evaluating the strategy of a diversified company um, along the way. Now, um, step one is evaluating the attractiveness. So a principal consideration in, in evaluating the caliber of a diversified company strategy is how attractive is it? What are the key measures of the industry uh, that want to bring you into the you want to bring it into the business operations? If the more attractive the industry, uh, the better the prospects for a good long-term sustained performance that we were talking about along the way. Now, um, the uh, the calculating the weighted weighted industry attractiveness scores, right? Uh, and so this is just a weighted matrix. You could use this for a lot of things in your life. Uh, probably good to save. But the sum of all weighted scores for the attractiveness measure, it provides an overall industry attractiveness score. And the importance of the weights have to add up to one. You notice in column two, they do just that, right? You have to weight things and pick, right? And make sure they add up to one. And so you could use this sort of table to rate uh, the various industries. It's like any other weighted matrix valuable tool. Now, step two is evaluating the business unit, the competitive strength. So 
relative to the market share is the ratio of the business unit to the market share, right? Uh, uh, compared to its maybe its largest rival, right? Uh, maybe measured in volume instead of dollars, right? Or using a relative market share to measure competitive strength. So there are lots of ways to do this. A simple and reliable analytic tool for gauging industry attractiveness is going to involve this sort of quantitative score-based uh, measured approach. And this would be an example of the calculating the weighted competitive strength scores for diversified companies' business units, right? And so you see the various business units there. This is doing the same thing. Uh, so after setting that competitive strength measure, uh, for those that are well matched to the circumstances of their business unit, right? Each business unit here is going to then be rated on each of the chosen measures and strengths, right? And in the, uh, in the end, you'll have who you uh, should uh, partner with based on your weighted approach. And then what you can do is um, uh, plot them, right? From strong, average, weak, low, medium, high on the, the vertical axis, strong, average, weak. From a co So you're comparing the competitive strength slash market position to the industry attractiveness. And so this nine cell grid, it's like a Sudoku puzzle, it divides the vertical axis into regions and the horizontal axis into similar, right? And as it's shown here, a, a score of say 6.7 or greater on a, on a scale of one to 10 really is high industry attractiveness. And scores of 3.3 .3 to uh, 6.7, for example, uh, maybe are average and less than 3.3 .3 would be considered uh, low in the uh, rating scheme of things. So each business is going to be plotted on this matrix to uh, give a picture of the overall attractiveness of the strength score. Um, and then you can show it as a bubble. And, and the size of the bubble, notice some are bigger than others. The size of the bubble gets bigger. It's scaled to the percentage of the revenues that the business is going to generate. So in this figure, uh, using the grid lines and the industry attractiveness score uh, and the strength scores of the business, you can make a comparison. So there are uh, impl strategy implications for of the attractiveness and strength matrix, right? So the industry attractiveness that we're trying to show in a picture can be used to per portray the strategic position of each business that you plotted in a diversified company, how it's going to respond. Attractiveness is plotted on the vertical axis and competitive strength as we saw on the horizontal axis on the last slide. Now step three is determining the competitive value of a strategic fit in a multi-business company. And so again, the greater the value of cross-business strategic fit is about enhancing your performance in the marketplace or on the bottom line, right? The more competitively powerful uh, you are, the better. And so without significant cross-business strategic fit, uh, you have to be skeptical about the potential of your diversified company's business to be able to perform better uh, and to be a good mix into your uh, effort. Now, step four is evaluating the resource fit. So the business in a diversified company gets lined up uh, and, and it should be a good resource fit. So in firms that have related diversification, a good resource fit happens when the firm's businesses have well-matched specialized resources and requirements at points along their value chain that are critical to the business, right? And if those match, you probably have a pretty good fit. Matching resources re and requirements are important in related diversification because they're going to facilitate a sharing and a low-cost uh, resource transfer, and I would add 
information transfer too. So the core concept is this understanding in a diversified company of the resource fit along the way. Uh, and then another core concept was that a strong internal capital market is going to allow a diversified company to add value by shifting capital from the business units and it's going to generate some cash flow then that is needed to expand and realize the uh, potential growth. So you want to be able to determine your financial resource fit, right? Uh, a portfolio approach is going to ensure financial fit based on the fact that the different business units have different cash flows and investment characteristics. Now a cash cow is going to uh, generate cash flows above and beyond its internal requirements, right? And so uh, it's going to give the parent company the funds for investing uh, further. Now cash hog business is going to generate cash flows that are just too small or negative, right? And they can't really fund its operation. And it's going to require infusions of cash uh, to continue and uh, capital investment. That's uh, a good candidate for a sell-off. So the core concepts here being a cash hog and a cash cow. You're welcome to pause and review these at your leisure. Uh, so assessing cash hogs, right? The reasons for not divesting uh, in a cash hog business. Eh, pretty clear here. I think that's self-explanatory and the book enhances it. Now examining a diversified company's non-financial resource fit, um, uh, you want to ensure that you can meet the non-financial resource needs by uh, asking these questions. Matching resource requirements is an important part of this related diversification because it's going to facilitate resource sharing and low cost resource transfer. Uh, step five of this process was ranking the business units and setting a priority for resource ac acquisition. And some factors you might consider are sales, profit, earnings, rate, uh, return on investment, ROI, or cash flow generation along the way. So once you've diversified, then you want to uh, evaluate the perspective of industry attractiveness, competitive strength, strategic fit, and resource fit uh, as a way of ranking the performance of the businesses from best to worst. This is really going to help you prioritize resource support and cash investment. Um, so the chief strategic and financial options for allocating financial resources are reviewed on this slide. So business subsidiaries with the brightest profit uh, at prospects and growth prospects uh, are attractive in tra attractive positions on that uh, nine cell Sudoku slide that we showed and they're a solid strategic and resource fit and they should re receive top priority for allocation of corporate resources along the way and the last step is step six crafting new strategic moves to improve this overall uh, corporate performance. The conclusions flowing from the, the, the five preceding analytic steps, in addition to this one now as six, is to set the agenda here for crafting that strategic move uh, to improve a diversified company's overall performance. It boils down to four broad categories of options, right? And so you can uh, stick closely with the existing business lineup or you can uh, broaden the diversification base along the way. So uh, this often involves company-wide restructuring, corporate restructuring, restructuring along the way as part of that. And so uh, divesting uh, business and retrenching to a narrower narrow diversification base, uh, these are spin-off conversations that we want to have. So some core concepts are corporate restructuring and spin-off. You can pause and review these final two slides. Uh, the diversified companies need to divest low performing, get rid of them, uh, that don't fit in this and because you want to concentrate on expanding the existing business and that's the point of this slide it's like doing surgery on your business to take out the bad mole okay thank you